Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. So, today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be another university Q&A. You guys seem to love these, so I thought I would do another one. Seeing as though it's not very long until people get A-level results, as well as, like, organising things for moving into uni, there's literally, like, a month and a half left until September. So, I figured now was the perfect time to do another university Q&A, so that you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to be like. And if you are a first-year student, you can get some advice, or if there's anything particularly you wanted to know about my university experience, I can kind of talk through that today with you. However, before we jump into the video, I just want to say a big thanks to Anna Louisa for sending me over some jewellery pieces which I'm going to talk through and show you now. Anna Louisa is a new jewellery brand that I have seen quite a bit recently and they very kindly got in touch and sent me over some jewellery pieces which I will overlay some clips of because they are so pretty. I never used to be very big on jewellery but recently it seems to be something that I really enjoy wearing. Anna Luisa is so big on like sustainability. All of their jewellery is tarnish free and long lasting. There is nothing worse than having jewellery that tarnishes. I've had rings before that have been quite cheap and that have turned my fingers green. So I love the fact that this jewellery is tarnish free. It means I will have it for a long time and I'll be able to get a lot of wear out of it. Starting at about $39, they are super affordable obviously for tarnish free good quality jewellery. One thing I love the most about Anna Luisa is that it is their goal to achieve a net zero carbon footprint by the end of 2020 and move on throughout the rest of their years to do so. I think it's super important that brands are starting to make awareness for things like that and really put it into practice when they are making their products so that the world can be a better place. They've also very kindly given me a discount code which I will leave in the description box below and I'll also pop that on screen for you so feel free to go and check them out and pick out some pieces for yourself and apply the discount code to get 10% off and if you do end up buying anything feel free to post a picture on Instagram or on social media and don't forget to tag them. I will leave their website and everything and their socials down below for you to go and check out. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump on into the Q&A. <laughs> I should probably really quickly mention that I have just finished my first year at uni so this is advice coming from a recent first year. I'm going into second year in September and I'm studying film and TV production. Um, yeah. Okay, let's jump on in. You guys have come through with these questions. We have so many to get through so I'm gonna try and do like a little quick fire situation. Um, so the first question is things, advice slash tips you wish you knew before starting university. I think one of the main ones that stands out for me is the whole pressure around going out and drinking and all of that kind of stuff and I know some of you feel the same way because you've messaged me and talked about like the fact that you don't drink and what's that going to be like for you and personally for me I did find it okay. I felt a little bit nervous before I actually went to uni because I was a bit like what's it going to be like? Are the people going to understand the fact that I don't really drink and that I don't go out very often and that kind of thing but everyone was really understanding so I feel like that's something to bear in mind if you're feeling a little bit nervous about that that it's not a problem and if you set your stall out before you go and be like I don't really drink but I'm gonna come anyway or I'll come for a few hours kind of thing people will understand okay the next question is how to budget this is something that I've kind of experimented with over first year to kind of get an understanding of it a bit better my main tip <laughs> would be try and save money as much as physically possible whether that's before you go to uni or whilst you're at uni i did not have a part-time job in my first year um, and i managed to get by with my student loan i'm lucky in the sense that my mum is a single parent so i got quite a lot of maintenance loan um so if you're in a similar situation maybe see how it goes for a month or two before jumping in and getting a job straight away because obviously you want to see how university is going to actually be and whether or not your workload is going to be enough for you to get a job and all that kind of stuff there's lots of stuff to think about regarding that give yourself a certain amount of money every month as a like a budget so for me i think i gave myself about 200 pounds a month 250 maybe and i managed to live off that that was including food um going out like i lived comfortably off that amount of money if you do it right and don't spend a lot of money i think my main outgoings was probably buying clothes which you know what i'm all right with that <laughs> but yeah it's definitely worth thinking about i have saved quite a lot of money <laughs> over the past couple of months obviously with lockdown and everything i've not really done much so i have been able to save which let me tell you is definitely helpful because i feel a lot more secure 
when it comes to going to uni in September. I have a happy amount and I will get through the year. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question. Budgeting is a little bit like, mm, I don't really know. I had a couple of questions on budgeting and I kind of hope that sums it up but if there is something specifically you want to know then just comment down below and i will get back to you next question is how did you find living on your own um actually really okay i seem to really enjoy my own company um i just get on quite well with myself so <laughs> i found it okay when i was younger i was quite a shy person and it's only recently over the past couple of years that i've come out of my shell a bit however i still really just enjoy my own company so i did find living on my own really good i enjoyed it i was able to manage myself and i could go out when i wanted and on top of that i'm a bit of a clean freak so i like everything to be nice and tidy although with the state of my bedroom right now you would not think that but i do when i'm at uni like to keep everything clean and tidy and i just think if i was in a shared flat that would really really annoy me that like my kitchen would be a mess because i'm sharing with people and ugh. so yeah i did really enjoy living on my own and if it's something you're considering then i would definitely recommend it any advice on making friends this is something that i think everyone is worried about when it comes to going to university and let me tell you university is there to help you out with that during freshers week there are so many events on and everyone is in the same boat everyone feels the same way don't feel like you're alone in freshers week because everyone feels like they're alone but you're not you will find that throughout the first couple of weeks of your course when you get put into groups and things for icebreakers or little projects and things you will gravitate towards the people you want to gravitate towards and that is how i made the friends that i'm still friends with today most of my friendship group i made friends with on like the first week of uni so they are there to help you with things like that so please don't feel nervous i know most people will and it's pretty much irrelevant me saying that but you will make friends they will come to you naturally it'll all be okay what accommodation type studio or halls do you recommend this is very dependent on the type of person you are or what you want to do in general um it's completely up to you i lived in a studio flat for my first year i'm also living in the same studio flat this year it is completely up to you my building was made up of both shared flats and studio flats and like my corridor this is going to be difficult to describe but a corridor was basically at one end a shared flat the other end a shared flat and in between was all the studio flats and the same goes throughout the entirety of my building so we had mix of both shared flats and studio flats i was friends with a couple of people that were in shared flats so i know from their experiences what it was like living in a shared flat and i know from my own what it was like living in a studio flat just do your research but i would definitely say if you're thinking about a studio it's definitely worth it um but at the same time, you might want to throw yourself in and get shared flat. So it is very dependent on the type of person you are or what you want to do personally yourself. I need a drink. This is one of my mum's cans. So if you're watching mum, thanks. <laughs> Someone said, food shop essentials. Funnily enough, right? I didn't find myself living the typical student food shop life. Very stereotypical for people to say, oh, you know, you live off of beans on toast or pot noodles that's not necessarily true this does depend on whether you decide to spend your money on alcohol or you decide to spend your money on food i didn't really drink so i was able to spend my money on food and actually live off of like substantial meals however if you choose the alcohol route you will probably end up living off of pot noodles and beans on toast i bought in pot noodles and like pasta packets and pasta and things like that but i also bought things for actual meals like chicken and rice and vegetables and things like that so it kind of just depends if I'm honest um if I wanted something quick and easy and I couldn't be bothered to cook I'd just grab a pot noodle if I felt like I needed a substantial meal then I would have a proper meal someone says is uni harder than a levels in terms of workload I didn't do typical a levels like i didn't go to sixth form and pick four subjects to do a levels in i went to college and got the equivalent of three a levels just by doing an art course so for me yes there was a lot of work in my college course but it was all focused around art so i didn't really feel like there was a lot of work because i was doing work that was fun and interesting to me whereas i feel like if i was at sixth form and i had to pick like four different subjects and one of them was the one that i wanted to go to uni to do then i feel like the workload would be so much more because I'm not enjoying the other subjects. I do feel like there is a little bit of a level up at uni. There is a lot more that 
I didn't think I would have to do. But that all kind of comes with the fact that you're learning a new subject and you're learning things about the industry and what you're gonna do like in your future and learning about the jobs that you might do. So yes, I think there is a little bit of a step up in regards to work, but it's all important because it's gonna get you somewhere in life. In first year, I kind of dealt with the workload, but I feel like it might step up a bit in second year, which I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> how long does your course last? This is different course to course, but for me personally, my course is four years long. It can be three years, but I'm choosing to do a placement year, which means it's four years long. So I have first year and second year learning stuff. Um, and then I have third year as a placement year. And then I do my final year as my fourth year. I could have equally done my final year as my third year, but obviously as I've said, I'm choosing to do a placement year. So it's four years long. Tips for making friends whilst living in a studio um get in the group chats for your building 100 percent. that's how i made friends in my building um talk to people in your building whether they're in shared flats or in studios you can still make friends with people that are in a shared flat that's what i've done so yeah just talk to people that are going to be in your building general conversation whether that's what kind of course they're doing or if it's about the building you're going to be moving into any questions like that it's definitely helpful to be in a group chat, both for your course and for the building that you're gonna live in. I 100% recommend doing that. How do you deal with CFS slash ME crashes and bad days at uni? I'm worried for when I start. <sighs> I had a hell of a ride through first year with my health. Um, it's difficult, I will say that, but listen to your body. If you feel like you might need to go back home, go back home. Don't push yourself too hard because that's what I did and I ended up making everything 10 times worse. Talk to someone, whether that's a lecturer, like I got allocated a personal tutor at uni. So I spoke to him quite often about how I was feeling and if I was having a particularly bad flare up. Um, they have support in place at university for things like that. So maybe get in touch with your like disability center at uni. Um, I would definitely just recommend talking to someone at university. You might get allocated a personal tutor like I did or equally they have the support staff there at uni for you to get in contact with. That's what they're there for so definitely take advantage of that where you can. How can I manage my time well? Love from South Africa. Oh my god that's so cool. I love finding out where people are from that watch my videos so hi. I stress out when I need to manage my time. I often feel like I don't have enough time when I do and stress out for no reason. Um, get yourself a planner or a timetable. They are definitely helpful. I use my planner throughout like all of uni. It's just helpful to keep track of when you need to hand things in. Um, Prioritise the work that is obviously needed to be handed in first um, so that you get that out of the way. Type up your lecture notes. If I can give you any piece of advice it's to do that because you will find that you'll need certain information and if you don't type them up you'll find yourself scrolling through all the presentations that they've put online and you need to find a specific piece of information that you could have written down in your lectures. So 100% write down your lecture notes. <laughs> what are some quick and easy meals that I can make? Um, pasta, hands down, so easy to make. Um, any sort of rice dish that you might like. Like for me, I pretty much lived off of chicken and rice with like some tomatoes and things. Um, soup, if you can buy soup, it's the best thing to have in because it's healthy. You're getting all your vegetables in soup and it's so easy to just heat up in the microwave. So definitely recommend soup. Um, other than that, I'm not too sure. It kind of depends on what you eat because obviously some people might be vegetarian, some people might be vegan. I'm not. Any sort of family meals that is like a family tradition or something or a family recipe makes you feel like you're at home. So definitely some of those. Someone asked, do you have to meet all your requirements to study the course? Um, hmm, I think for, when I applied, I think I needed five GCSEs, I definitely needed my maths GCSE and I needed 120 UCAS points which I think was a merit and I got a distinction so tick and for me I didn't pass maths at GCSE so I studied that whilst I was at college and I also didn't pass my GCSE maths at college so I did my functional skills which my university accepted because I'm blessed. <laughs> so yeah 
I think you have to meet all your requirements, although I think that's what clearing is there for. Which residence would you recommend cheap also? Um, this depends on what your university has to offer, if I'm honest. If you are in a position where you can afford private accommodation, which I was very fortunate to be able to do, um, then I definitely recommend private accommodation because they're so much nicer than the university accommodation. Uni accommodation is often very gross, um, badly decorated and just a bit, a bit gross, if I'm honest. Whereas private accommodation is a lot nicer, so it really just depends on what you're able to afford or what you want or what your university has to offer or the city that you're going to union has to offer. Next question is ideally how much time is enough to study? Again, these questions are all very dependent on the course that you're doing. Um, for me, I didn't really find myself studying, it was more doing work. <laughs> um, I don't have exams so it wasn't like I had to revise or study any sort of particular information. Um, I was able just to spend most of my time doing actual work. On a film course you have to kind of put in a lot of practical work so that's what I spent most of my time doing so in regards to actually spending time studying I didn't, I don't really know, it is very dependent on your course but I think you'll find out like what the best is for you as soon as you start uni you'll get a vague idea and your lecturers and things will recommend how much time you should spend doing your work and studying and all that kind of stuff. Do you write exams in your course? No I don't have exams that I know of I mean we had like little information tests but they were just online and it was like multiple choice so it wasn't really like your typical sit in a room and do an exam paper kind of thing so no. <laughs> do you know many people that have part-time jobs during uni? Yes, um, a couple of my friends did have part-time jobs equally a lot of my friends didn't. Um, I'd recommend maybe leaving it a couple months if you're able to do that like if you're able to afford to maybe get to Christmas without having a job then I would because you'll get an idea of when you can actually work regarding like how much how much time you have to put into your course and things like that so I'd recommend leaving it as long as possible as you can physically afford to before getting a job just because then you'll get an idea of like what days you can work, what timetable you've got, that kind of thing. How much did you spend a week on food? I think I did an Aldi food shop maybe every two weeks and that was kind of it enough like to get me through. However, if there was things that I'd run out of in those two weeks, I'd just pop to the Tesco's down the road and grab those. Yeah, I'm fairly certain I did like a big food job every two weeks and just topped it up here and there. So probably about 25 pounds-ish, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is the independence like? It's great. I loved being independent at uni. However, it comes with its downsides. Obviously, you've got to like adults, so you've got to do washing and you've got to wash pots and you've got to keep things tidy and you've got to be on top of everything so yeah it was fun it had its downsides <laughs> how did you find out about your accommodation just through google um i googled student flats or like private accommodation or university accommodation for the city that i'm in which is newcastle um and yeah i just kind of looked through all the websites i'm fairly certain i went on every single university halls website that there is to offer for Newcastle um, and had a look at all of them before deciding which one I wanted so that's how I just found it through the internet. What do you need to bring for an artsy course? Um, if you go onto your university website I think for most courses there is a list of like equipment that you might need so maybe research into that but it depends on what kind of art course you're doing maybe get some sketchbooks um, get yourself a hard drive for your computer because it's always helpful to have a space to put all of your uni work and keep it safe on somewhere like that. That's what I did. Um, I guess just like pens and pencils. <laughs> what are some of the things that you definitely have to buy for university if you are living alone? Um, a toaster, a kettle, mm, what else? Anything you'd buy in a kitchen really. Um, I did a video recently on everything that you need to take to university where I reacted to my first year uni haul. I will link that down below or in the eye somewhere so you can go and watch that. That'll give you a bit more of an idea of what you should and shouldn't take to uni. Um, but yeah, 100% a kettle, probably an iron. I think that's about it. But go check out that video and that'll definitely tell you. Do you think Freshest 2020 is still happening? I hope so. 
I want to like go out with my friends in freshers now I've actually got friends for freshers you know like where do international students keep their dorm stuff when they're flying out for the summer uh can't pack duvets and bins I don't really know if I'm completely honest this is something that yeah I don't know don't know I can't answer that question I'm very sorry I think some universities have storage where like you can pay a certain amount every month to put your stuff into storage there is equally like other storage places in cities um where you can like purchase a unit to put your stuff in which I don't think is that expensive I think it's maybe about 50 pound a month so I don't know you might have to do some research into that because I'm not too sure. How did you like the studio accommodation and why did you go for it? Um, I really liked the studio accommodation as I've mentioned. I like my own company, I like sort of doing things in my own way. Alongside the fact I have some health issues which I knew I would be able to manage better if I was living on my own. So yeah, that's basically why. What is the cost of your course? I think for a year it's 9,000 250 I don't know specifically but it's around that number um which obviously is part of a student loan I don't see that money it goes straight to the university from the loan company but I think that's roughly how much it is per year what is the cost of living going out groceries etc as I've mentioned I gave myself about 250 pound a month to do all of that on and I managed to kind of get through with that amount of money so I'd probably say about that much <laughs> Okay, next question is, what were your grades like in first year? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind you asking, that's okay. I can't remember how many modules I did. I think it was about six, um, but I got two firsts and the rest of them were all like high two ones. And then my overall grade for the whole year was 68%, which is a very high two one and 2% of getting a first, which <sighs> that 2% really got to me when I opened my results, but you know, okay we'll just work on it second year <laughs> but no i'm really happy with that to get high to one in first year i'm very happy with so yeah that was my grades one of my friends on my course rachel hello if you're watching what is your funniest uni story from first year any of our lectures with len seem to always end in hysterical laughing so probably any lecture with len <laughs> um other than that i don't know if there was a specific story that i have best thing about going to northumbria i'm going there this year um hmm. i like everything about northumbria to be honest the campus is like slap bang in the center of newcastle which is great um the whole vibe of the uni it's very open and fresh which is great um it's all very modern and i just like like the whole ethos and feeling and vibe around the campus best and worst thing about uni hmm this is a good question. Best thing, probably the people you meet and the memories you make with your friends, 100%. Worst thing, having to be an adult and cook for yourself and wash your clothes and yeah. And then kind of in the middle of both of those is the work that you have to do because some of it's fun and some of it's not, so. Advice for someone who is thinking of going to uni. If you're thinking about it, do it because probably the best decision I've ever made. Wow, if past Lauren heard me say that, she would not think it was true. <laughs> I have been joined by the cat. You like to make an appearance in every video. Oh, cuddles. How are you, if you are, preparing for second year? Um, as of yet, I'm not preparing because I've got time to do that. <laughs> um, I probably won't start preparing until like three weeks until I move in. Um, that is about the time that all of our introductory material gets put on the online system. So when that happens, I'll probably go through and look at what my second year is gonna bring and what my modules are gonna be like and kind of do a little bit of research into that. Um, but other than that, I'm not doing a whole lot. Do you wanna go out? There you go. Someone asked uni stationery and what to bring in a uni bag. Um, Stationery wise, anything you take to school really. Pens, pencils, rulers, rubbers, sharpeners, all that kind of stuff. Um, in my uni bag, I had headphones, I had my glasses, I had my laptop, I had my iPad, uh, chargers for those said things. Oh my gosh, is that it? Oh, I've answered all the questions. Wow. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this university q and I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight if you're going to uni in September. Um, if there is any other questions you may have, feel free to comment them down below and I will answer those when I can. Don't forget to go and check out Anna and Louisa. As I said at the beginning of the video, I will be sure to link them down below and don't forget to use my discount code if you are gonna purchase from them. I am in love with these necklaces and I can't wait to wear them more often, so highly recommend highly highly recommend and yeah if you did enjoy it feel free to give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button whilst you're down there and i'll see you guys super soon with some more university content yeah peace out thanks a bunch and goodbye have a good day